Right, good day grade tens. In this lesson we're going to be looking at naming and writing formula of substances. So when we're looking at the names of compounds we have to use our knowledge of our element names to name our compounds. So for example let's look at our NaCl. Na, now grade tens, you should by now know most of the names of your common elements. In fact, I think you need to learn a minimum of the first 30 names on your periodic table. First element, 30 elements on the periodic table, so you should be able to name these. But let's go through them nice and slowly. Na, we should know, stands for sodium. And Cl, Cl is actually chlorine. But when it is in a compound, it is, gets to be called chloride. So sodium chloride. Now let's look at di and tri. What is di and tri? Di means two and tri, if you think of tri meaning like a tricycle or a tripod, obviously then tri means three. So if we have this name, we can see that we've already used this without even realizing it. Because what is this? This here, the C stands for carbon one of the most abundant elements in the in Earth. And O is oxygen, but what does this 2 tell us? This 2 tells us that there are two oxygens for every one carbon. So therefore, what is 2? Two? 2 is di, so it is di, and just like chlorine changes to chloride, oxygen, when it is in a compound, changes to carbon dioxide. Let's look at another one. Now you might not be familiar with this substance, but using our knowledge of our element names and our dies and tries, we can actually work out what this is. So what is S? We know that S stands for sulfur and sulfur and then there's O and O is oxygen, but there is that little three. And what is the three telling us? The three is telling us that for every three, for every one sulfur we've got three oxygens and what is three? Three is tri, so we've got sulfur trioxide. Right, so we can see that we can use our element names to name compounds, but sometimes things get a little bit more complicated when we have ions. Now what is an ion? An ion is an atom that is either lost or gained electrons. In other words, it's no longer neutral. And in this case, this is a cation. And cations are positive ions, which means that they have lost electrons, because electrons are negative. So a cation table is a table of ions that have of atoms basically that have lost electrons to become positive and therefore they are cations. Now if you look here you can see that it's actually quite easy for some of them because hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium are all in group one, right? So they get a positive charge of one plus, okay? Beryllium, magnesium, calcium and barium are in group two so therefore they will get a positive charge of plus two and aluminium we know is in group three so that's nice and easy. Now the rest you'll notice except for silver which is special and ammoni ammonium which I'll talk about in a minute the rest of them you'll see that they have for example mercury one or they have yeah you can see there's copper one over here and then there's copper two over here now, on the periodic table, the middle bit, we know are called transition elements, they're transition metals. And what's special about them is they can change their valency, they can change it from a plus one to a plus two, for example. So if that is the case, we need to identify whether or not we're looking at copper one or copper two. So we would either have to look at what it's bonding or when we're naming things they would have to give us that it's copper 2 so we would know that it is the copper with a 2 plus um, charge. Now ammonium is one that you have to learn. It is a compound 
and it has a positive charge of plus one. So you have to learn that ammonium is NH4 plus. Silver is very special because silver even though it's a transition element is always just plus one always so there's no problem there so now you need to become very afraid in other words you need to learn how to use this cation, cation table now if there is a cation table with positive ions there has to be an anion table anion because these are negative ions negative which means they have gained electrons so they've become negatively charged so they've gained electrons um, electrons so now if you look here very carefully you can see fluorine chlorine bromine iodine now these are in group seven and they are obviously therefore only going to gain one electron to become noble gases because all the elements on the periodic table want to become noble gases if you look over here we can see oxygen and sulfur now they are special also because they're in group two i mean group six and you need eight electrons on the outside so they're going to lose they're going to get two electrons because they had six now they're going to get two to become eight and if you look over here very carefully again you will notice nitride which is actually your nitrogen and phosphide and they are in group five so obviously they're going to gain three so the circled ones we actually know from the periodic table so that's quite nice but but you need to unfortunately learn quite a few of the other ones so i'm going to put little stars next to the ones that unfortunately you need to learn so that you can use these when we are either naming or writing formula so the first one we're going to look at is hydroxide hydroxide is oh minus you'll notice everything in this column here on the left in the middle here this column what is the charge it is minus one whereas over here the charges are minus two up to my blue line and then it is minus three over there from there onwards it's minus three so now let's go back to this so we're going to be learning about a hydroxide then we've got nitrite which is NO2 minus and nitrate which is NO3 minus now don't feel bad it is a rite of passage for all science students to learn these and you cannot name formula you cannot read equations you cannot understand any of your chemistry unless you can learn these and use them in the right places so it's very important that you learn them hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 minus you need to learn that one Hydrogen sulfate, HSO3 minus, you need to learn that one. Hydrogen sulfate, HSO4, sorry, you have to learn that one as well. Oh, we can skip a few now though. Chlorate, I mean, you have to learn. Chlorate, there. Chlorate, chlorine, chlor, and eight, meaning it's got an oxygen, and you will see it's sealed. O3 minus permanganate. Permanganate is very popular because it comes in the forms of lots of compounds that we use for experiments. So you need to know your permanganate is MnO4 minus. Now let's move on to the right hand side and there are a couple here you have to learn as well. There is carbonate. Carbonate is important because it forms part of your carbonic acids and carboxylic things and also so interesting things. So you need to learn your carbonate. Then please know the difference between your sulfite which is SO3 to minus and sulfate which is SO4 to minus and then you can skip over and then we go to chromate which is CrO4 2 minus and dichromate where you'll see suddenly we've got two chromiums that's why it's dichromate but also please note that the O now has changed from a 4 to a 7 and then you've got manganate now please note the difference between permanganate over here on the left hand side where it is permanganate which is MnO4 minus and manganate which is MnO4 2 minus and then we've got the last one you have to learn is your phosphate which is PO4 3 minus now you need to learn these so that you can either write um, the formula or you can name the, the compounds. So let's look at examples. So first of all let's look at naming compounds. Now we're going to use a combination of knowing our periodic table elements and those cation and anion tables to name these. So the first one's pretty easy. 
We know this because K we know is potassium, potassium, and we've already spoken about chlorine, but when chlorine is in a compound, it becomes chlor. Right. Right. Then this one, this should be nice and easy for us again. The N is nitrogen. Now remember, what does that 2 mean? That 2 means that there's two oxygens, and 2, the prefix for 2 is di. And oxygen changes from oxygen to oxide. So it's nitrogen dioxide. Now we get to one that is slightly more complicated, and we have to think a little bit. Because in this case, we have a compound ion, a compound ion. So we have to think a little bit. So first of all, let's think about potassium. Potassium is in group one. So potassium is K plus. Okay, we know that. Now let's go look at our table. And we can see that MnO4 is either going to be MnO4 minus or MnO4 2 minus. However, if we think about this, we know that this is K plus. The whole of this is neutral. So the only thing that that can be joining up is with MnO4 minus. So therefore we know that this is potassium permanganate. Permanganate because we know that the minus one is permanganate. Right, let's look at another example. Let's look at sodium, ooh, NaNO3, I gave the name away almost. We know that Na is sodium, and again, Na is in group one, so it's Na plus. So let's go back and look at our table again, and let's go look at NO3. NO3, now if you look carefully, you can see that NO3 is NO3 minus, and the name for that is nitrate. So, if we name this, it would be sodium nitrate. Now, you got to understand that in exams, you will have the periodic table, but you won't have the cation and anion tables. So you need to learn this cation and anion tables so that you can just name it just like this. Now let's look at the other way around. Let me give you a couple of names and then we can think about how to name this. So first of all, we've got calcium carbonate. So calcium is nice and easy because it is in group 2 and it is calcium. Okay, and we know this in group 2, so it's plus 2. But what about carbonate? Let's go look at our table. So carbonate, if we go look carefully, hmm, where is it? Where is it? It's over there. There we go. CO3 2 minus carbonate. CO3 2 minus. So now if we go back, we can say we've got calcium and we've got CO3 2 minus, and this is 2 plus, and that's nice and easy. So our formula CaCO3. End of story. Nice and easy. Let's look at another one. Potassium dichromate. Potassium dichromate. Now remember, potassium is in group 1. So it is a K, and it's potassium is in, got a just plus, okay? But now if we look at our table, we want dichromate. So do you see that dichromate is CO2O7 2 minus? So what is potassium dichromate? Potassium dichromate basically is saying that we have got K plus and we've got CO2O7 2 minus. But what does that mean? We need we've got one plus here, right? and the two minuses here. So that means we actually need to swap, we need an extra potassium. So we're going to have two potassiums to join up with our one dichromate to make a nice neutral molecule called potassium dichromate, a nice beautiful compound. Another way you can think of it is that we're swapping. So this is just a one and that's a two. So all you do is you swap them. So you end up with a two year and obviously nothing there. Right, now let's look at copper sulfate. Copper sulfate. Hmm, it can either be copper two plus or copper one plus, right. But now let's look at sulfate. 
sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So if we go back to copper sulfate, we can see that even though we know that copper can either be copper 1 plus or copper 2 plus, the fact that they haven't specified means that it has to be the same charge but in the opposite opposite size. I mean, as in it's still going to be the same size of a 2, but it's going to be the positive 2 plus. If they wanted us to know that it was a different one, they would have given us copper 1 sulfate. So therefore, this is just CuSO4, copper sulfate. And the last one we can look at is iron chloride. Iron chloride. Now, this you would use in your periodic table because you've got iron, or you should know it from your periodic table, but iron is Fe. And Fe is a 2 plus, okay? And chlorine we know is in group 7, so it's just a minus. So therefore, it is going to be what did I tell you about swapping over? We're just going to swap that over, okay, right? So we don't write the 1 because that's silly. Otherwise, we'd write one year, but we do behind the seal write the two. So it becomes Fe seal two. Right, so that's grade 10 is looking at how you will name different substances or how you'll write out the formula. And the best thing you can do is to practice. So I suggest you go through the questions at the end of the section, you practice, 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 and learn your cation and anion tables. Thank you.